So today we're going to talk about paired pooled and errors that exist. And so we're looking at, and when we're looking at these, it means we're going to compare two means. So comparing two means, if we consider this problem here, we have resting heart pulse rates for a random sample of 26 smokers has a mean of 80 beats per minute and a standard deviation of 5. Among 32 chosen non-smokers, randomly chosen non-smokers, the mean is 74 and the standard deviation is 6. Both sets drawn were roughly symmetric and had no outliers. So we can assume that because of this statement here, we can assume uh, the central limit theorem. Is there evidence of a difference in the mean pulse rate between smokers and non-smokers? And if so, how big? So what I'm going to do for this one is we are going to, first thing, are going to do what is called a two-sample t-test. There's the name we're going to start with two sample t-test. And I always like to write down all the numbers that I get. So x bar is going to be 80 beats per minute. N1, the smokers, is going to be 26. And S1 is going to be 5. Similarly with the non-smokers, their harsh rate is 74. N2 is equal to 32. And then the standard deviation of the second one is 6. Now note, there is no alpha, so I'm going to let alpha equal 5%, okay, which is, if it's not given to you, we're going to assume that it's 5%. Um, and so degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom, if they're pooled, which I'm going to talk, means that the standard deviations are the same, and all the time in our course, we are going to assume that they're pooled, and so that's going to be n1 plus n2 subtract 2. And so I get 50, this will be 56. And your GDC will always tell you this fact as well. All right, so now we look at the standard deviation. We have to ask ourselves, is this the standard deviation? Is this the unbiased estimate of the populations? Or is it the actual standard deviation of these particular groups of data? Because it's the actual standard deviation of these 26 smokers, it's the bias estimate of the population. So we have to go and calculate the unbiased estimate. And I know that the n bias estimate is n minus 1 squared of the variance is equal to n over n minus 1 times n squared. And we have these values here. But calculation-wise, if I take the square root of both sides, I can see that these will cancel, and so it's going to be n over n minus 1 square root is equal to the standard deviation. And so I can just do this particular calculation. And so my standard deviation, number 1, is going to be, if I go second 26 divided 25, uh, of 5 is 5.0990195 and for the other one uh, n minus 1 or s2 is going to be similar you know, second square root of there's 32 divided by 31 which is n minus 1 come out of the parentheses and times it by 6 and now I get 6.096006 is sufficient. So I have all the numbers I, uh, I need. I can carry out my hypothesis test. And so I, the hypothesis is that mu1 is equal to mu2. That's always our null hypothesis, that there's no difference between the two. And our alternative hypothesis is going to be that there is a difference between the two. And so I just go to my calculator now, I go stat, I'm going to go to my tests, and I'm going to do a two sample t-test number four. I'm going to put statistics in there and I have 80. I've already put the numbers in. I got my standard deviation. I put them all in. Here I make sure I do it's not equal to and it's pooled. And I'm going to calculate. And so I can see that my degrees of freedom is 56. My t value is equal to 
zero zero six, which I'll round that to three significant figures, four point zero one. And my p value is equal to one zero point zero 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 one. It's really small. It's basically zero. And so now, therefore, since the p value is less than alpha, so we always start with a reason, we will we will reject H naught. And then we either reject or don't reject and claim, and then we talk in context about the alternative hypothesis. And this time we claim strong evidence of a difference between smokers and non-smoker heart rates. Heart rates. Okay, and so we always have to have the reason, we either reject or don't reject, and then a statement in context of strong evidence or weak evidence or no evidence based upon the context. There's always three parts to a conclusion. And so then finally, which always kind of makes sense, is how big is the difference? Well, to find out how big the difference is, that is going to be our confidence interval. So if I go to here and if I look at zero to two sample t interval, I have it transfers it over and I'll do a 95% interval with pool and I'm going to calculate it. The difference is between 2.99 and 9.00. So the difference in heart rate, the difference in heart rate in heart rate is between 3 and 9 beats per minute. We are 95% confident. Okay, and so we use the, the T test because we do not know the standard deviations of the population. We convert the standard deviations of the samples into the unbiased estimate of the population. We apply the two sample t test, we pool the data, we conclude it, and then it asks for our confidence interval because they want to know how much is the difference.